Welcome to Bard's Craft. Today we're turning a peasant level craft into an epic craft. In a recent video I got comments about my very simple buildings and how I should not throw them away. Alright then, I'll turn this humble hut into something worthy of a gaming table. While at it, I'll also finish this ruined windmill. Okay then, I hope we can all learn something from this. Let's start by taking a look at this. As you can see, the stonework looks quite alright. The roof, however, is a bit odd, so I'll have to figure out something for that. The color is a bit off. I'm gonna start by making some deeper textures for the wood. I just gently worked with the pen to make the grooves a bit deeper. Now I can see that I used too much red when mixing my brown for the roof. Back then I was such a peasant crafter that I didn't even bother to buy brown paint, I just mixed it. <laughs> okay, with the improved textures I can now repaint the roof. I'll do that with a black paint. Some water makes the paint easier to spread out. This is actually quite easy to cover, because there's already paint on this. And let's be careful when... never mind. Let's be careful when painting the door. Doesn't matter, we can repaint the stone as well. Okay, that's a good base coat, now I'll just let it dry. Okay, I'm out of craft paint, so I'll have to use these. I know it's a sin to use these for a building like this, but an even bigger sin would be to mix these with craft paints. Right. So this is gonna be a golden brown color. Uh, well, it's not. A bit more yellow should do. Okay, I'll use this one to overbrush the black roof now. Yeah, that works quite well. This could be perhaps a bit more orange in color, but I'm happy with this. It is certainly luxurious to paint buildings with these miniature paints. The coverage is very good. Let's keep working with the miniature paints. Here we have some drake tooth. I let this paint mix a bit with the brown, so we have a kind of a very light brown here. I'm still kind of overbrushing here. I'll do a dry brush later, after this one. Wood is certainly one of my most favorite surfaces to paint, especially if the textures are quite deep. It looks good. Now the brush is already quite dry. Just a few more touches here and there, and of course the door. Okay, switching over to some white and a better dry brush. With this I'm just gonna touch a few planks and edges. While at it, I also dry brushed some on the stones. Now I think I'll use this one to make kind of like a mini diorama style build with lots of interesting things. I'm gonna start with basing. Cardboard is a good material for basing, but it, it can warp a bit, so let's be careful. As long as the base isn't too large, there shouldn't be much warping related issues. I wanna place the house up on a small cliff. I'm gonna make that out of bark. We can't make it too high, because the base is kind of small. I'm just gonna try to fill this up, later we'll add more flocking and such. I'm placing these small bits to form a path down from the door. Yeah, that should do. I'm gonna quickly glue these in with hot glue. Okay, 
This is the part where you can be as messy as you want. All of this will be covered later. Okay, let's fill these small holes with little bits. A good thing about the hot glue is that at least this part of the diorama will not warp. Not at all. Next I'm checking if the house sits well here. No, we're gonna need some pieces there and there. Let's cut this up. By the way, huge thanks to the patrons who are supporting the channel. That's good enough, the rest can be filled with bark flocking. Also remember to remove hot glue mess, it's not nice. Alright, I'll just glue the hut on. Be careful if you're using the hotter glue, it might melt foam. To add some more textures to the rock, I just cut off small bits with the knife. Okay, I think something big could fit here. Perhaps this one. Mm, yeah, I'm gonna shape it a bit. Okay, a big protruding cliff. I'm gonna add some more textures to it, like this. By the way, this is pine bark I got from a dead tree. I have sterilized it in the oven, so it should be safe for minis. Yeah, that's a nice cliff. You can always secure these into place with more bark. Okay, that's quite sturdy. It will be even more sturdier when we add the PVA glue. Yeah, this is quite messy. Yeah, I'm just going for it and covering all remaining surfaces with plenty of PVA glue. I'm fully covering the base and applying glue in some cracks and holes so we can add the bark flocking. The bark flocking will work as our base for the ground. What you see here is just chopped up bark. You can separate the different grain sizes by shaking. Today this is extra messy because I am kind of recording audio and video at the same time. That's extra messy right there. Before I let this dry, I still covered some of these parts. All of this will be brought together with grass flocking, I hope, to make the flocking stay better in place. You can tap it down like this. If you see here, the border of the ground and the house doesn't look too good, so we can fix that with more glue, of course. Don't be afraid to be messy. That should do it. Now it's just a matter of waiting. And it's also time for a big cleanup. We got plenty of interesting treasures from the forest here. Now that I'm thinking of it, let's make a tree. Let's make a small tree out of these. This is very simple. Here are my perfect bits. I'm just gonna hot glue these together. Then I'm also using the hot glue to reinforce the tree. Also making the trunk much thicker. 
Now I'm using much cooler glue to add some textures. Of course, the twigs do have nice textures as they are, but they are quite thin. Okay, that's, that's quite good. For a better tree, you could try to find a twig that is already of suitable shape and thickness. But this is good for me. Let's also add some PVA glue and flocking, so the tree stays in place very well. Now that the glue is dry, I'm gonna base coat this with a mixture of black water and some PVA glue. This is actually quite watered down, but let's see how it works. Seems to work. This actually works better than expected. The watered down paint spreads out quite nicely. The tree is also painted with the black. While the glue dries, I'm gonna make a quick set of ladders. This twig is too fresh. That one's better. Okay, done. This will look good when we add some washes. Now the black paint is still a bit wet, but dry enough to continue painting. First I'm painting the rocks with a diluted dark blue. I'm just applying this on the most visible large chunks. Up next, some diluted orange to go along. I'm just mixing the orange with the still wet blue paint. I might have applied a bit too much, so I'll remove the excess with some paper. The rest of the ground is messily painted with a dark brown. This color is also quite diluted. As you can see, I don't give a crap where the paint goes. That's a good thing to keep in mind when painting terrain, at least when painting the most lower surfaces. At this stage we can also paint the tree. I'm just overbrushing with a brown. We can already see some textures on the tree. That's good. This is now completely dried. I added a bit more of the brown because all of this turned quite dark after drying. Even the rocks aren't as colorful anymore, but that's alright. Now this is starting to look like something. When painting, I'm letting the bristles go in between the cracks. This is not a dry brush or an overbrush. Just general brushing. Next, we're doing a grey dry brush on the stones and some areas of the ground. Nope, a bit too much. Yeah, the blue and the orange undertones are doing their work. I really like this new brush I got. So far it has done everything very well. The soft bristled medium brush is good for applying a base coat, applying washes and for dry brushing as well. I recommend getting one for terrain projects. It's very good. On the ground I'll just add this grey on a few spots. Next I'll use this lighter brown. I'm over brushing the tree first. In this way I also get a suitable amount of paint for the later dry brushing of the ground and stones. I have to say, that's a quite decent peasant level tree. 
Okay, some dry brushing on the ground. Never mind, this is not a dry brush. I'm just poking in the bristles so we get paint a bit on everything. With this paint, I brushed just a bit on the stones. Next, I'm using Drake Tooth again to dry brush the stones. Nope. Keep in mind, you definitely don't need mini paints for terrain. I'm just using them so I don't have to mix. Another reason for using these mini paints is that I have convinced myself that I'm saving money by not going to the store to buy proper craft paints. That's a great lie. These epic bark rocks should hide the peasantry of this hut. The tree can also be painted with the tan, and then with a green. Alright, moment of truth. I'm gonna use these homemade flockings I made in the last video. Yeah, this is the stuff. I have high hopes for it. First, I'm gonna add some diluted PVA glue on areas I want grass to grow. I'm just gonna do half of this first so we don't get a huge mess. Yeah, I'm just sprinkling it on. A small sieve would be very useful here, but I'll have to figure it out with my hands. Nope. It's okay to throw this around, I can gather it up later. Why not put some on the rocks as well? Looks quite nice. Let's apply some of the more vibrant green on some places as well. I also have a darker one, I'll try some of it here. Okay, then on that I'll put some of the medium green. Yeah, this would definitely be much easier with a small sieve. Perhaps even with the larger sieve I have in my kitchen. When I don't have a sieve, they form these clumps when I roll them between my fingers, but that's no problem, I can fix that. Just takes a bit more time. Yeah, this is certainly commercial grade. I'll just add a bit more of the green stuff here. Not the cleanest application. A bit more of the bright green here as well. A small spray bottle with diluted PVA glue would make this much easier as well, but I refuse to make that. Yeah, that's very good. I think I went a bit overboard with the flocking because most of my ground is covered, but it's good anyway. Let's continue with the tree. So I got this waste product from making the flock because I added a bit too much paint in the mixture. But these can be used for something good, perhaps. I'll apply some glue on the tree first. Then the plan is to place on these clumps as branches and leaves. I think that works, actually. I'll add a bit more glue so they stay in place. Yeah, so if you want to make these, just add a bit too much paint in your flocking mixture. And you won't have as much flocking, but you get this stuff. Now this doesn't look too durable, so I went ahead and made a PVA water mixture in a spray can. Now this is a great opportunity to sprinkle on some flocking on the trees. I dipped the ladders in quickshade only because I have it. As an alternative, you could just paint the ladders with diluted brown and black. I glued the stairs into place and then covered up with some flocking. After that, I dry brushed a bit with the Drake tooth. 
what I learned from this is to not flock everything. Here on the base of the ruined windmill I just applied the flocking as patches. I sprinkled on half covering patches of the medium green flocking. Then on top of these I added more of the bright green flock. I think this looks a bit better than that one. Also I added a small grass tuft here. Now I'm gonna use a bit of this white lichen and also this green one. This has actually remained perfectly green for many months inside. I snapped off this little bit and I'll glue it somewhere here between the rocks perhaps. Alright and one there. Oops, that's a bit too much glue but we can fix it with a bit of this stuff. Yeah, that should do. These are the greenest ones I could find. I glued it here. Keep in mind, when gluing on these tiny fragile things, you should take advantage of your terrain. These stone formations provide good cover and some protection for the fragile pieces. Alright, I'll take the epic shots of this soon. The base is a bit warped, but I think I can bend it back. Yeah, let's call it done. I hope you have enjoyed this craft. If so, do subscribe, like this video and most importantly, go flock yourself. Watch one of these builds next, if you so wish. Also, if the content is of high value to you, consider checking out pledge and reward options on Patreon. Those include the Bard's Craft Beastiary, Early Access, Homebrew and more.